Welcome to the 22nd Victorian Community History Awards. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we all meet here today, their elders past and present. The Community Awards have been supported by the government for many, many years and it is co-hosted by the Public Record Office of Victoria and the Royal Historical Society of Victoria. And I would like to acknowledge Tara Oldfield and Emily Mayolo for their wonderful efforts in bringing this together. Despite COVID, we have had a, a record, or near record, 176 entries this year, which totals more than 200 creators. They're supported by designers, by editors, by copy editors, by printers and uh, digital support. This year, we have nine categories and 12 judges. And those judges, we thank them all, but they are in particular the central panel of uh, Carol Woods, Gary Presland and Helen Doyle. Carol Woods is this year stepping down after 20 years on the panels and seven years as chair. Where will be three people announcing the awards today, Janine Hazelwood of the Public Records Office, Al Thompson of Monash University and Catherine Andrews representing the Premier. But I would like to hand over now to Danny Pearson, Minister for Government Services and also Minister for Creative Industries. Thank you very much. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which I'm filming today. I pay my respects to their elders past and present and the Aboriginal elders of other communities who may be joining us for this presentation. Thank you, Richard Broom, President of the Royal Historical Society of Victoria, for your very warm welcome. I'm pleased to be part of this virtual announcement of the 2020 Victorian Community History Awards as part of my new role as Minister for Government Services. When I took on this role in June this year, I was thrilled to learn that the Public Record Office Victoria, our Victorian Community History Awards co-hosts, had become part of my responsibilities. It's no secret that I love history, and I've always been impressed by the work that our archives and community collections do. As a member of the Essendon Historical Society, I've been involved in projects to preserve our local history with many wonderful volunteers and historians, including setting up a committee to restore the Moody Ponds Courthouse after the 2016 fire, with the Courthouse Museum reopening late last year, thanks to Victorian government funding. So I know firsthand the valuable work our historical societies, local historians and passionate volunteers do to preserve and share the history of our communities. You just have to look at some of the virtual events that have been offered this History Month to see some incredible examples. And the 2020 Victorian Community History Awards shortlist is itself not so short. Between July last year and July this year, the judges found 48 community history publications and projects from across Victoria worthy of singling out as outstanding works designed to inform and entertain Victorians with stories of their past. Whether that be histories of workplaces, diverse communities, buildings or individuals, it's just fantastic to see such varied ways in which these histories are presented. Books of course figure prominently, as they do every year, but it's also great to see history interpreted online in the form of apps and websites and in ways that can be enjoyed from home. This level of accessibility has never been so important. For those of us who love history, the shortlist provides a menu of reading and learning for the year ahead. So I wanna thank every historian, researcher, producer, curator, web designer, podcaster, writer, and the many volunteers who have had a role in the project shortlisted for an award today. And to all the entrants this year, keep up the great work. I also want to congratulate both Public Record Office Victoria and the Royal Historical Society of Victoria for the work they do to celebrate history each year and for adapting the awards program so that we can still promote the outstanding work produced in 2019 and 2020, even though we can't be together in person. I'll now hand over to Justine Hazelwood, Director and Keeper of Public Records at Public Record Office Victoria, 
who will announce each award winner today. Thank you, Minister. As the Director and Keeper of Public Records at Public Record Office Victoria, I've been pleased to present at the Victorian Community History Awards in the past, and of course, I attend each year to support Victoria's wonderful community historians. It's my pleasure to announce the winners this year for 2020. Starting with the Collaborative Community History Award. Here are the shortlisted applicants for collaborative works that involve significant contributions from several individuals or groups. Cape Otway Light Station and the Victorian RAAF Radar Association veterans for Cape Otway Light Station World War II Memories. Cheryl Threadgold for In the Name of Theatre, the history, culture and voices of amateur theatre in Victoria. City of Port Phillip for Montague, a community lost and found. David S. Jones and Philip B. Roos, editors for Geelong's Changing Landscape, Ecology, Development and Conservation from CSIRO Publishing. And Murchison and District Historical Society for Rock on Murchison. And from this shortlist, the winner of the 2020 Collaborative Community History Award has been chosen. Congratulations to Cheryl Threadgold for In the Name of Theatre, the history, culture and voices of amateur theatre in Victoria. The judges said about this work, in his introduction to this book, Frank Van Stratton, doyen of Melbourne's theatre history, writes that amateur theatre, with its infectious enthusiasm, creates a special form of magic. It's this magic that Cheryl Threadgold captures in her book, exploring successive periods of amateur theatre in Victoria and reflecting on the many people involved. The great strength of this book is the second part, which features representatives of about 150 amateur companies across Victoria. Cheryl Threadgold, herself a long-time participant in aspects of amateur theatre, conveys a rich community theatrical culture in this wonderful collaborative project. Congratulations, Cheryl. Next up, we have the Local History Project Award. Recognising activities that enhance access and awareness of records of significance to local communities. The shortlisted applicants are Abigail Belfrage for Bonley or Bonley, Grand Dame, Beloved, Home. Damien Finlayson, Claire Gervasoni, Simon Jacks, Dr Janice Newton and Dr Michael Taff for Mining Mud and Metals. Kiwa Valley Historical Society for The Power of Water, the history of the Kiwa Hydroelectric Scheme. Patrick Ferry with Wally Nye for Blood, Toil, Tears and Sweat, remembering the Pakenham District's World War II service personnel, 1939 to 1945, from the Berwick Pakenham Historical Society and Pakenham RSL. And Peter Spark for Clune Cemetery, Victoria. Headstone Register, 1861 to 2020, Volume 1 on Presbyterian Section. I sense there are more volumes to come. Congratulations to all of you for being shortlisted. And the winner of the 2020 Local History Project Award is Patrick Ferry with Wally Nye for Blood, Toil, Tears and Sweat, Remembering the Pakenham District's World War II service personnel, 1939 to 1945. The judges said of this work, produced to coincide with the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War, this book is an outstanding example of collaboration. The list of contributors fills seven pages. Archivist Patrick Ferry, assisted by Wally Nye, has amassed a wealth of documents and images to illustrate texts text that covers the local and international context and profiles of about 220 Pakenham men and women who enlisted from the local district or were strongly associated with it. The integration of records into a well-written narrative is an impressive local history project. Congratulations Patrick and Wally. Now for the History Publication Award. 
The History Publication Award recognises non-fiction publications or e-books on Victorian history. The shortlist includes Brian Rule for Malden, A New History, 1853 to 1928. David Day for Morris Blackburn, Champion of the People, published by Scribe. Janie Anderson, Max Vidola and Shane Carmody, editors, for The Invention of Melbourne, A Baroque Archbishop and a Gothic Architect, including the book published by Magunya Press, as well as the catalogue for the Old Treasury Building exhibition on the subject. Marjorie Theobald for The Accidental Town, Castlemaine, 1851 to 1861, Australian Scholarly Publishing. Sean Skarmer for Democratic Adventurer, Graham Berry and the Making of Australian Politics from Monash University Publishing. Simon Smith for Solicitors and the Law Institute in Victoria, 1835 to 2019, Pathway to a Respected Profession, published by the Law Institute of Victoria. And Paul Daffy for The Totem Poles of Oyen United, Travels in Country Footy. Congratulations to all of you for being nominated and for being shortlisted. And the winner of the 2020 History Publication Award is Brian Rule for Molden, A New History, 1853 to 1928. And a lovely part of the world Molden is. The judges said, this new history of Molden is a window into the minutia of life in a gold mining town and makes a valuable contribution to the ever expanding body of work on the Victorian goldfields. Skillfully contextualised, this account covers the vicissitudes of mining and the local economy while providing insight into the rich fabric of social life, the political sphere and labour issues. The township has proud traditions relating to its gold mining past and classification by the National Trust as Australia's first notable town. Brian Rule reflects perceptively on this legacy when considering the future of heritage in, in Malden. Congratulations, Brian. Next, we have the Local History Small Publication Award. This award recognises small publications or e-books which feature Victorian local, cultural or social history. The shortlisted applicants are Andrew J. Kilsby for The Case of Arkengroon Edwards, and Continental Tyres, Benjamin Wilkie for Gary Word, An Environmental History of the Grampians from CSIRO Publishing, Faye Woodhouse for Gita, Melbourne's first yoga school, 65 years of history from Hindsight Publishing, Helen Billman Jacob or Jacob and Anne Westmore for Breaking New Ground, Biographies of Women Agricultural Science Students, University of Melbourne, 1942 to 1965. Jackie Durant for Fire on the Plateau, A History of Fire and Its Management in Stanley, from Stanley Athenaeum and Public Room. And Stuart Kells for The Convent, A City Finds Its Heart, published by the Magunya Press. Congratulations to all of you for being shortlisted. And the winner of the 2020 Local History Small Publication Award is Benjamin Wilkie for Gary Word, An Environmental History of the Grampians. The judges said, the author of this well-presented work seeks to answer the question, what is the nature of Gary Word? The mountain range formerly known as the Grampians has been a significant presence in the lives of the people of the region since the earliest human settlement tens of thousands of years ago. Recognising the meanings humans give to nature is a function of prevailing culture and thus will vary through time. Benjamin Wilkie examines how people have interacted with this iconic landscape feature. Gary Word is well il illustrated and referenced and should stand as a fine example of the place and value of studying nature within the realm of writing history. Congratulations, Benjamin. Now for the Digital Storytelling Award. The Digital Storytelling Award recognises digital representations of history. The shortlisted applicants are Emma Ramsey and Andy Young for Misadventures in Little Lon. 
Her Place Women's Museum Australia and the Women's Mural Documentation Project, in collaboration with the artists of the original 1986 Women's Mural from Bonbonieri to Barbed Wire, Megan Evans and, and Eve Glenn for reimagining re the Women's Mural, a digital tour. The Jewish Holocaust Centre, Melbourne for Ask a Survivor. Rachel Fencham and Andrew Furman from the Digital Studio at University of Melbourne and Digital Heritage Australia for La Mama, the biggest little theatre in Australia. And Tim Ross for Designing a Legacy. Congratulations to all of you for being shortlisted. The judges actually had a very tough time deciding between all of the outstanding projects in this category and so we are pleased to announce two winners for this year's Digital Storytelling Award. They are Rachel Fencham and Andrew Foreman for La Mama, the biggest little theatre in Australia, and Emma Ramsey and Andy Yong for Misadventure in Little Lon. Of La Mama, the judges said, Carlton's La Mama Theatre holds an iconic place in Victoria's cultural landscape, and this web project provides an interactive tour exploring the history and significance of the theatre by inhabiting its archive as a material and virtual space. This charming project gives audiences access to a rich media digital story by bringing together a complementary mix of technologies, narratives and voices. The visual design, the narrative engagement and the aesthetics of the project have all contributed to the appeal and success of this well-produced project. And of misadventures in Little Lon, the judges said, Melbourne's Little Lon district is notorious for its 19th and early 20th century criminal connections and underworld. The misadventures in Little Lon allows players to experience an augmented reality game based on documentation of a true crime in 1910. Players explore heritage sites, question witnesses and collect clues to solve the crime. The brilliance of this entry is the bold use of mobile locative storytelling. This is one of the few entries that push the boundaries of engaging their audience in the story with technology. And it offers real engagement, whilst either navigating the streets of Melbourne in real time, or luckily for us in this time of, of restricted movement, from the comforts of our own homes. Congratulations to both projects. Now for the Community Diversity Award. The Community Diversity Award recognises projects or publications that reflect diversity and inclusion and tell the history of cultural diversity in, in Victoria. The shortlist includes Darren Arnott for No Regard for the Truth, Friendship and Kindness, Tragedy and Injustice, Roville's Italian Prisoners of War. Maria Avram and Helena Kidd for when the Past Awakens, A Mother's Pain. Jen Rose, Well Chosen Words, in partnership with The Boite for The Boite, History Through Music, Song and Story. Sophie Couchman for Journeys into a Chinese Australian Family History with the Chinese Australian Family Historians of Victoria. And Sue Silberberg for A Networked Community, Jewish Melbourne in 19th century, in the 19th century, from Melbourne University Press. Congratulations to all of you for being shortlisted. And the winner of the 2020 Community Diversity Award is Jen Rose, Well Chosen Words, in partnership with The Boite for The Boite, History Through Music, Song and Story. The judges said, The Boite, literally the cabaret, has been a significant part of Victoria's cultural scene since 1979. In a variety of venues across Melbourne and in rural settings, the Boite's multifaceted program has aimed to increase awareness of the music of Victoria's migrants from non-English speaking countries. To mark the Boite's 40th anniversary in Victoria and celebrate its many achievements, a website was developed which presents their story through words, music, pictures and video. It is wide ranging in its multicultural subject matter, in its aims and in the means used to convey its history. It is thus a fitting winner of this award. Congratulations, Jen. 
Now for the Historical Interpretation Award. The Historical Interpretation Award recognises projects that best use a unique format of historical representation. The shortlisted listed applicants are David Willis with photography by Dimitri Bonatakis for A Guide to Historic St Kilda from St Kilda Press. Gregory Hill for Colour and Fantasy, Australia's first colonial art potters, 1896 to 1910 from the Bandura Homestead Art Centre. Lisa Phillips, Jennifer Levitt Maxwell, Robbie Simons, and Goza Studio for the Jewish Holocaust Centre virtual tour. Lucy Bracey with illustrations by Gregory Mackay of Annie's War, the story of one Burundara family's wartime experience from the city of Burundara. Melbourne's Living Museum of the West for their munitions industry commemorative heritage panels and Springthorpe, Springthorpe Heritage Group for heritage walks for the time of COVID-19 social distancing. What a great idea. Congratulations to all of you for being shortlisted. And the winner of the 2020 Historical Interpretation Award is Lucy Bracey with illustrations by Gregory Mackay for Annie's War, the story of one Burundara family's wartime experience. The judges said, in 1916, Edward Slade enlisted in the First World War, leaving his wife and three young children. His story is told from the viewpoint of his daughter, Annie, who makes sense of the tumultuous events of wartime through her own experience of the home front in suburban Melbourne. This book for young readers is beautifully designed with original illustrations that are sensitive and complementary to the text. It touches on the social and political tensions of life during wartime, people's hopes and fears, and childhood innocence set against the grim four years of hostilities. Drawing on official military records and private family letters, Annie's story is a personal and at times moving account of one family's experience of the war and its aftermath. Congratulations, Lucy and Gregory. Next is the Historical Article Award. The Historical Article Award recognises journal articles that feature Victorian history. The shortlisted applicants are Alexandra McKinnon for I am proud of them all, and we all have suffered. World War I, the Australian War Memorial, and a family in war and peace, published in the Australian Journal of Biography and History. Jackie Durant for Moongambidge, First People of Mount Buffalo, published in the Victorian History Journal, Historical Journal. James Lesh for Cremorne Gardens, Gold Rush Melbourne and the Victorian Era Pleasure Garden, 1853 to 1863, published in the Victorian Historical Journal. And Ruby Eckel for Women's Sphere Remodelled, a spatial history of the Victorian Women's Christian Temperance Union, 1887 to 1914, published in the Victorian Historical Journal. Congratulations to all of you for being shortlisted. And the winner of the 2020 Historical Article Award is Ruby Eckel for Women's Sphere Remodelled, a spatial history of the Victorian Women's Christian Temperance Union, 1887 to 1914. The judges said, this is a thoroughly and deeply researched article presented with a verve and a pace that makes it both conceptually strong and persuasive. By undertaking a spatial analysis of the activities of the WCTU in Victoria between 1887 and 1914, Ruby Eckel demonstrates the, way is the ways in which these women were able to advance their aims for social reform in the public domain without appearing to undermine the established social order. Rich in local historical detail drawn from a number of locations around Victoria, the article is tightly enmeshed in recent local and international scholarship, which, though worn lightly, gives the article a compelling contemporary relevance. Congratulations, Ruby. The next award is presented in collaboration with Oral History Victoria, and so I would now like to int introduce Alastair Thompson, Vice President of Oral History Victoria, who will announce this award. In addition to his role at Oral History Victoria, Alastair is Professor of History at Monash University 
and also the president of Oral History Australia. His oral history books include Anzac Memories, The Oral History Reader, Ten Pound Poms, Moving Stories, and Oral History and Photography. He himself is also a past Victorian Community History Award winner. Thanks, Alastair, and over to you. Twenty twenty marks the second year that an oral history award has been given out at the Victorian Community History Awards, and it's the first year that Oral History Victoria has presented this award in partnership with the Royal Historical Society of Victoria and Public Record Office Victoria. Oral History Victoria nurtures a community of vibrant and informed oral historians, providing opportunities to learn and celebrate the dynamic practice of oral history. As such, we're thrilled to present this award to celebrate the excellent work that has been achieved in the oral history space in 2019 and 2020. The Oral History Award category recognises both print and non-print presentations that preserve and present first-hand accounts of individuals with unique life experiences and memories. It's my pleasure to now announce this year's, year's shortlist. Dot Griffin, Jan Shaw, Ruth South and Arthur Wintle from the Cockatoo History and Heritage Group for their book, Cockatoo Voices from the Past. Jessica Ferrari from Memento Media for her website, Memories of the Women's Royal Australian Air Force 1951 to 1977. And Sandy Jeffs and Margaret Leggett for their book, Out of the Madhouse, From Asylums to Care and Community, published by Arcadia. And I'm pleased to say that all three of the shortlisted uh, nominees will be presenting about their productions at an Oral History Victoria Zoom event on Thursday the 29th of October, and you'll find the details on the Oral History Victoria website. So congratulations to all of you. It's a wonderful shortlist of, of really extraordinary material. And I'm excited to announce that the winner of the 2020 Oral History Award is Sandy Jeffs and Margaret Leggett for Out of the Madhouse, From Asylums to Caring Community. Of this work, the judges said, and I quote, Out of the Madhouse is an outstanding history in every regard. The Madhouse was Larendor Psychiatric Hospital, a Melbourne institution from 1953 to 1999. Drawing upon 71 oral history interviews with former inmates, their family and friends, nurses, doctors and allied health workers and other staff, Out of the Madhouse brings to life the shocking consequences of mental ill health and the equally shocking treatments. A community where inmates and health workers struggled with ill understood conditions. A place of stigma and fear, yet also of asylum and friendship. The authors, a former inmate and writer, and a sociologist and occupational therapist, weave their own stories alongside the interview testimony into a profound social history. They conclude, and I quote, that forgetting the past may be dangerous because old wrongs are perpetuated and what is good, what was good, is lost. The lost history of Larendal, they write, is lost wisdom. End of quote. This is a book of invaluable wisdom for our troubled times. So congratulations to Sandy and Margaret. It was such a pleasure to read your book. Thank you, Alastair. There are only two more awards left. And for these awards, there, are, there is no shortlist, only winners, yay. Each year, the judges can award a special prize for any outstanding entry. This year, the judges special prize goes to Nick Ankin for Visions of Victoria, the magic of Kodachrome film, 1950 to 1975, published by Sierra Publishing. The judges said, Visions of Victoria provides a window on Victoria's past in the third quarter of the 20th century. Most of the photographs it presents were taken in Melbourne, but Bendigo, Ballarat and a range of smaller rural towns also feature. This volume is testament to the enduring quality and beauty of Kodachrome film. Reproduction of the selected image, images, about 150 in total, is of excellent quality aided by the glossy heavyweight paper used throughout. 
At first glance, it is the colour and sharpness of the images that hold attention. But the subject matter soon speaks for itself, and one's attention is fast has held fast by the realisation of how much has changed in our cities and towns since these photographs were taken. Congratulations, Nick. Congratulations to all of the winners. It's been a pleasure presenting the, the awards this year, even though I'm doing it sitting in front of a camera. And now for our last award, the Victorian Premier's History Award. I'd like to introduce our special guest, Catherine Andrews, to announce this year's winner. Catherine Andrews has a great understanding of the value of community history, having worked previously with Public Record Office Victoria and as an ambassador for the Royal Historical Society. She has presented awards in previous years, including in 2017, when she announced the inaugural Victorian Premier's History Award. Over to you, Kath, and thank you, everyone. Hi, I'm Catherine Andrews. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and the original storytellers from the place where I am today, the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Can I also acknowledge Aboriginal Elders of other communities who might be joining us remotely today? Thank you, Justine Hazelwood, Director and Keeper of Public Records, and Alistair Thompson of Oral History Victoria, for announcing the Category Awards. As Justine mentioned, and as a historian, I've been thrilled to have attended the Victorian Community History Awards in person over many years, where I've presented awards to some very talented historians. And I am pleased to be here again to announce this year's final award, although we do it remotely. We are in a very real sense, living through our own moment in history. And I sometimes wonder how will we remember this period of our lives in the years to come? What will I tell my grandchildren about this time? There will be stories of sacrifice, of incredible hardship. And then I think there'll be stories of our community, villages of spoons sprouting up on nature strips, learning to smile with our eyes, friendly notes in a neighbor's letterbox, colorful rainbows painted on the sides of our streets. In the years to come, no doubt, Future historians will write and rewrite about this period in our nation's story. But for me, I will always remember the incredible courage and kindness and compassion of Victorians. For now though, let's move on to the business at hand. This was a big year in the awards program with a high level of entries. The judges certainly had their work cut out for them. Every year, the Victorian Premier's History Award goes to the most outstanding community history project submitted in any category, displaying originality, excellence and scholarship. And as always, the competition was fierce. But this year, I am pleased to announce that the 2020 Victorian Premier's History Award goes to Amanda Scardamaglia for her outstanding book, Printed on Stone, The Lithographs of Charles Tredell, published by Melbourne Books in 2020. This book is a stunning book, and the judges have provided me with their summary, which I'd like to read now. Born in Hamburg in 1835, Charles Trodell became an apprentice lithographer to his father before being recruited to Melbourne by a Norwegian printer. Trodell founded his own business in 1863 and attracted praise for the Melbourne album, which is reproduced here. A master of lithography, the technique of printing on stone which transformed the production of graphic arts, Tredell gained great success in commercial advertising. He employed notable artists to design thousands of posters, labels, letterheads, business cards and programs. Amanda Scardamaglia's elegant book is based on the huge Trodell archive which is in the State Library of Victoria. She skillfully places Trodell's work in an Australian and international context without losing sight of the firm's Melbourne base and city clients, such as Guests Biscuits, the Carlton Brewery, fashion houses, theatres and sporting clubs. This book is in part a history of 19th century Australian advertising through the lens of the lithograph. Advertising both reflected and promoted social trends, 
such as alcohol consumption, smoking, and the obsession with cleanliness. Then, as now, technological breakthroughs, in this case lithography, affected social patterns. Above all, this is a commercial, social, and cultural history, written in a scholarly style, but with a strong popular appeal. Highly original, this book is visually superb and endlessly fascinating. I'm so pleased to be able to present this award and would like to thank every entrant for your commitment to sharing Victoria's history. And of course, congratulations, Amanda, who through the wonders of technology will now accept this award and tell us a little bit more about her outstanding work. Thank you. Hi, I'm Amanda Scardamalia and I'm the author of the book Printed on Stone, The Lithographs of Charles Trodel. I'm so delighted to be announced the recipient of the Victorian Premier's History Award for 2020. Thank you to the Public Records Office and to the Royal Historical Society of Victoria for supporting these awards. Thanks also to the judging panel for recognising this book. There were times that I doubted whether this book would even make it to bookshelves, so to receive this award and this acknowledgement really does mean a great deal to me. I'd like to congratulate all of the other historians and the authors whose projects have been shortlisted this year. It really is humbling to be recognised in your company. Charles Trodel was a 19th century printer and lithographer, and he produced print advertising for some of Australia's and the world's most iconic brands. I knew the moment that I got my hands on the Trodel archive at the State Library of Victoria that these beautiful images and the stories behind them needed to be shared. So thank you to the team at Melbourne Books and especially to David Tenenbaum who shared in that vision and made that possible. Thanks also to the State Library of Victoria who supported this work through a State Library Creative Fellowship. And a very special thank you to the Trodel family who've been so generous with their time and supportive and encouraging of this book and this project, especially to Bill and Alistair Trodel. And finally, I'd like to thank all of those people who watch this book come together from the sidelines. A very special thanks to my colleagues, my family, in particular, my dear, dear friends. I cannot wait to celebrate this book and this award with you all very, very soon. Thank you. It has been a very different Community History Awards presentations this year, but I hope nonetheless enjoyable. I would again like to thank all the judges. I would like to thank all the presenters today. I would like to thank all the creators of the works that have enriched our lives. I would like to also thank their families who have to uh, endure their creative efforts, often taking time out from family life to do so. I would like to thank the Victorian Government and the, and the Public Record Office of Victoria for combining with the Royal Historical Society of Victoria to make this a wonderful year of creativity. But we all look forward next year to meet in person for the 2021 Victorian Community History Awards. Thank you very much.